Hey everyone, my name is Braden. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create a PDF with Python. This is going to be a four part series. In the first part, we're going to discuss how to create the PDF object, how to add text, and how to move it around the page a little bit. In the second part, we're going to go over how to add headers and footers, page breaks, add page numbers. In the third part, we'll talk about how to include multiple lines of text and automatic page breaks. We will also discuss how to change the font color and add background color. And then in the fourth part, we'll put it all together and learn how to automate the process of creating a report or an invoice with Python. All right, to get started, I have a folder here. It has a couple of text documents and an image in it. I'll leave a link to those resources in the section below. I also have a folder for my virtual environment and some notes for this video. To get started, I'm going to open an Atom text editor. If you're curious about how I set up my Atom text editor, I'll leave a link to a video in the description below. So let's create a new file. We'll call it part1.py. And then we're going to open a new terminal. With Atom, I have the terminal down here. Otherwise, you can just open up a terminal how you regularly do. I'm going to activate my virtual environment. If you don't have a virtual environment, that's okay. You can move on to pip install fpdf2. fpdf2 is based on the original fpdf. However, this version is currently being maintained. In fact, it was updated about four hours ago, whereas the original FPDF hasn't been updated for about two years. All right, to start off, we will say from FPDF import in all caps FPDF. Then what we'll want to do is create an FPDF object or instantiate the object. We'll call this PDF and set it equal to fpdf. And here we have several options. We can specify the layout with either a capital P or a capital L. We can specify the unit of measurement that we want. So millimeters, centimeters, inches, and also the format. There's an A3 through A5, a letter format and a legal format. You can also create a custom size by passing in a tuple of integers with the first integer being the width and the second, the height. So I'm going to say I want this in portrait mode. This is case sensitive, so make sure it's an uppercase P and I'm going to measure this in millimeters and I want the format to be a letter. So right here, this measurement, this is going to determine how all of our position values are interpreted. I'll point this out later on. And after we create our object, we're going to want to add a page. We can do that by saying pdf.addPage. We also need to specify what font we're using. We can do that by pdf.setFont. There are several fonts available to us. Times, Courier, Helvetica, Symbol, and Zip Dingbats. The next argument we have specifies if we want the text to be bold, underline, italics, regular, or some combination. If we wanted a combination, what we'll do is pass in uppercase letters as a single string. For example, if we wanted bold and underline, we would add BU. Here, I'm going to use Helvetica font, set it to regular, by passing in an empty string and have a font size of 16. We can add text by adding a cell or multi-cell. So cell works good if we have a single line of text. Multi-cell works well if we have multiple lines of text. In this example, we're just going to focus on cell. So pdf.cell. With cell, we have a few important arguments. First is the width of the cell. If you specify zero, it will be the width of the entire page and then the height of the cell. So here I'm going to specify that I want my cell to be 40 millimeters wide, 10 millimeters tall. And then I pass in the text that I want. We'll say hello world. If we specified a different unit of measurement when we instantiated our object, such as inches or centimeters, then these units 
the 40 and 10 are going to be in the units that you specified, either inches or centimeters. After we've added everything we want to to our PDF, we say pdf.output name our PDF. So we'll call this pdf1.pdf. Save this. Run our script. So we can open this and see our hello world example here. All right, so this is awesome. However, it's unlikely that all we want to add to a PDF is hello world. We may want to add other images, other text, and so forth. So let's just say we wanted to add another line of text. We can do that easily. I'm going to keep this PDF open so I can show you a possible error you might run into. So to add another section of text, we would add another cell to the PDF with pdf.cell, add the width of the cell, just for fun, let's just say 80 millimeters and a height of 10 millimeters. This time, let's say goodbye world. Let's save this and we'll run it. And we notice that we get a permission error. So that's because I have this PDF still opened and I need to close it in order to run this script. So now that I've closed it and ran it again, we'll see that our new line has been added to the PDF. So let's just get a little more familiar with how to place text on a PDF file. So I'm gonna close this. All right, so first let's say we wanted more space in between the two cells. We can simply change the width here. Let's say 120, we'll save that, run our script, open our file. This time I'm going to open it with a web browser. That way we don't get the permission error if we keep running it and have it open, we just have to refresh it. So here we see there is now more space in between here because we said the cell width for this hello world cell is 120 millimeters rather than the 40 that we had before. So you're probably wondering, but how can I get the goodbye world on the next line? With the pdf.cell method, you actually can't add backslash n, that doesn't work. It does work in the multi-cell method, which we'll go over in part three of this video series. So when we're just using the cell method, what we'll want to do is add the ln argument, and we can set it to true. And what that says is that we want the cursor to move down to the next line after the cell is complete. So now we have the arguments width, height, text, and also ln, which has a zero or false argument and a one or true argument, which tells the cursor to move down to the next line. So let's save this file, run it, refresh our PDF web page, and voila, our goodbye world is on the next line. Let's look at what the height argument does really quick. We will change it to 100, save our script, run it, refresh the page, and now we can see that the cell is 100 millimeters tall and the text is placed in the center of the height of the cell. Let's add one more argument to our cell method, the border argument. What this is going to do is, you guessed it, draw a border around our cell. You're probably getting sick of me saying this, but let's save our file, run it, refresh our browser, and now we see the border drawn around our cell and can more clearly see that it is 120 millimeters wide and 100 millimeters tall. All right, so that is part one of creating a PDF with Python. Just to recap what we've learned in part one, we installed FPDF2 and then we imported FPDF from FPDF and then we need to create or instantiate the FPDF object. When we create the object, we can specify the layout, the measurement that we want to use and the size. After the PDF object is created, we have to add a page. We need to set the font. We can also change the font color. We can add text using the cell method. We specify the width and the height of the cell, include our text. We learned how to move the cursor to the next line and add a border around that text. 
And in order to finish our PDF project, we need to save it and close it with pdf.output and pass in the file path and file name of our PDF. So in part two, we will go over how to add images, how to add page breaks automatically once you have too much text that it flows into the next page, how to add headers and footers, page numbers, and so forth. So I hope to see you there.